My name is Eric Burgers and I'm a systems engineer on large complex projects like in uh, infrastructure, defense and automotive. I'm also a trainer at Hightech Institute and one of my trainings is system modeling with SysML. This training is about architecting and designing in SysML and uh, we do that for specific reasons. And it has to do with complexity. If you look at, for instance, if you work in a small project and you have a simple uh, problem to solve, this is what I would call an easy project. So the system complexity is low and the organizational complexity is low. Maybe you work as a small team work on a challenging or demanding, I would say, a demanding project. And that means that the technical complexity is high, but your team size is small. And you will be able to pull that off because, um, you know, uh, the team is small enough to, so that everybody knows who is doing what in, in this project. Now let's add another dimension, that's the organizational complexity. So your small team grows to 100 persons. And in that case, communication will break down and you need additional tools uh, to communicate design ideas to the rest of the team members. And now imagine a system or, or a project that has a high technical complexity and a high organizational complexity. So how do you communicate design ideas to the rest of the team, to the rest of this large team? And how do you make sure that you do not make any mistakes, for instance, for inconsistencies or wrong assumptions? So how do you prevent cost of failures in difficult projects? And that's what this training is about. It's about a, an approach to design systems um, uh, while preventing cost of failure in difficult situations. Now, technical complexity, I mentioned earlier, is probably most people know this, this, this diagram, and it, it shows the technical evolution of, of systems. It started out with mechanical systems, then you know electrical systems were introduced, so you have a combination of these two, etc., etc., up to the point where we have interconnected systems. Well, what's actually happening is that this picture doesn't do any good in the actual situation because this is what's actually happening. We have well understood mechanical systems, well understood electrical systems, and well understood electronic systems. You know, they don't hold many secrets to us because you know the, the behavior and the complexity is relatively small to compare to what we are building nowadays. Nowadays, most systems are software intensive. That means that they exhibit very complex behavior. And if you com combine these complex systems together, you get even more um, uh, complex behavior. Emerging behavior is also called. And then of course, if we have the system that is already very complex, we will connect it to the rest of the world where other con complex systems live. And then you can imagine that the complexity will increase beyond, let's say, our mental capacity to understand. And so we need additional tools to be able to design these systems. Now the small box, the small box on this side, the small box on this uh, uh, represents the classical systems engineering approach. So basically, the classical systems engineering approach is about well understood systems that are being built. But as soon as um, complexity increases, we need more tools. And that's the domain of model-based systems engineering. To give you an idea on this complexity, how this looks uh, in a practical example, in the beginning of 1900, you know, telephony was invented and it started out with a simple, uh, a simple speaker with a microphone and a hook that you could uh, tap on and you would be connected to a friend lady on the other side and you could request to talk some, to somebody else probably known by name, so the operator would plug you in and you could talk to each other. Now fast forward a few, uh, fast forward more than 100 years and we have our current telephones like the smartphone. It's a telephone, but it's also more. It's a, it's a camera, it's, it's a, 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 a GPS tracker, it's you know, everything you can imagine what you can do with it. It's, it, it's this, this smart device. And it also means that it's complexity in sense of behavior is increased millionfold in comparison with the old telephone. Now, <clears throat> why, why, why does it happen? Well, the customers demand more functionality, so and more and more functionality, and more and more uh, relationships within, uh, within these, these functions will cause this complexity to grow, grow beyond our control. So we need additional tools to control it. 
So this graph shows why we uh, want to use architecting and designing in SystemL. And the reason we use this is that um, if, you let, if, if somebody makes a mistake in a large complex project and you let this defect propagate all the way to the end, it will be very costly to repair. Everybody knows about product recalls. Um, this very, it's, it's a very costly um, uh, case. So if you are able to prevent these failures for, to be made as soon as possible, it will cost you less to come up with a proper working product. Now this graph here uh, shows you a kind of the relationship between what costs are being made in the project. So this is F squared that goes up, this is cost incurred and the cost committed. And what we mean with cost committed is that if you make a design, it's probably also what you're going to make in production. That means that your design already defines the outline of the product so that also the cost of this product is, are, is being defined. And the, after you have de designed your system, about 20% of the costs have been incurred, but 80% of the costs have been committed. So any defect that you can uh, solve in the first 20% of your project um, will not propagate to the end. Now this training is about a disciplined approach to uh, create complex uh, uh, projects in large organizations. And uh, what we're going to talk about is how we are going to describe the problem domain, so what is needed, and how we're going to describe the solution domain, so the product we're going to create. And in these, these two domains, if you start with the problem domain, we start with um, defining our intended use. And our intended use is are the operational scenarios that show us how this product is going to be used by, by the user or by the organization that needs this, this particular system. Now this system doesn't uh, run in isolation, so what we're also going to do is look at how we are going to document the operational environment. The operational environment is not simply just you know, a user interface with a user, but we talked about interconnected systems. So the operational environment by itself is already quite complex. And you need to be sure if you want to scope your project, what it is, what you want to solve. We're going to talk about user requirements in the, in, in, uh, in the form of use cases. Now, um, the, the training is called uh, Architecting and Designing with SysML. So SysML is a means to describe, what, to describe certain aspects of your design. And use cases, although in SysML there's a very small chapter uh, on, the, uh, on how you should write them down. There's actually a complete method behind it. And we're going to dive into this method as well. We're going to talk about requirements, what is needed by the system. And we're going to talk about functions. So functions that are required to be performed by the system as a part of a system of systems. In the solution domain, we're go this is basically about our design. We're going to talk about the composition of our system. So what are the system elements and what are the interconnections? And these interconnections will represent, of course, interfaces. But it doesn't stop there. Because once you have identified interfaces, you also need to say something about how do these system elements cooperate or collaborate basically to solve the problem that you defined before in the problem domain. And the, and Next thing you want to do is, for each system element, you would like to describe the behavior. Well, in, in our case, we have three types of behavior, which we will elaborate in the training course. But these types of behavior will help you to understand each system component and also help you to, uh, to test them. And in order to test them, you would like to simulate the system as a whole, and you would like to simulate for maybe the, the, the system elements you've just defined. So we're going to look into how do you simulate within how do you simulate in this 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 in, in within model-based systems engineering, and of course you also need to know how you you know the the the, the information that has been um, uh, written down in the model. So you need to do something about verification. Now all these these me methods and techniques are based on SysML. So the products we are going to to produce is a SysML model that has all these aspects um, uh, registered in, in it. And in order to get to these, uh, get this model, there's a few methods you can follow. There's well-established method methods. One is uh, object-oriented systems engineering method, and the other one is function-based systems engineering. And we're going to, in detail, in go into both ways. 
So this whole, tra this whole training course is, has a solid foundation within systems engineering well. I mentioned before, we have the classical systems engineering and model-based systems engineering is nothing more than the next step in the evolution of systems engineering with additional tools. And the additional tool is, of course, a SysML model that we use to create our design. So what are you going to learn in this training course? You, I will help you to go from a problem statement to a proper solution by using these steps that you can apply in a large complex system. So it starts with the intended use I mentioned before. So why does the system exist? Next thing, we're going to talk about what the system is supposed to do. So it's about the requirements. That includes the, uh, the, the standard requirements and the use cases. We're going to talk about architecture, how you design a system uh, that it is well structured, it's modular, and that you look at the various interfaces between the system components. And the idea is that you end with subsystem requirements, basically the product requirements that you basically can either way give to another company to, to create a, a, a small product or maybe to another department that will take that, uh, these requirements and elaborate those in a domain-specific design. So this training is not about domain-specific design, like electrical engineering, electronics, civil engineering, not at all. It's about system level. And we're going to talk about verification. And all this is going to be inside a model. And so this training will help you to apply model-based systems engineering in a systems engineering context. I hope to see you in my class. Thank you for your attention.